Good evening, and uh, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate it. It's difficult here in Paris to draw a crowd, uh, to stay inside. I just checked, it's still raining, uh, so you're not missing a beautiful romantic evening uh, at the time. Uh, I think the second most difficult uh, time besides after lunch, of course, is just before dinner. Uh, I'm cognizant of that, so I will do everything I can to make this a super valuable experience for you. So a few years ago, I had the privilege of speaking uh, at Lyceum down in New Zealand, at the New Zealand Chiropractic College. And there was a question that was brought up there that has really rung with me for years now. I've spent the last 30 years trying to help understand what it's going to take to get our message to the masses. We've just spent the entire day here listening to some of the most brilliant people on the planet, yes? Yes, was today an amazing day? Yes, can we give a hand to... <laughs> Absolutely. And as much as I know about social media, I feel, I'm the, I think I'm one of the only people on stage that's not a PhD. Uh, so I'm gonna try to keep up. I'm also though gonna shift the information to the other side of your brain. Uh, because we've learned a lot about uh, references and research and the brain and how amazing adjustments can be and helping the body not only heal itself, but to help us function and perform at a higher level. Yes or yes? So when I was speaking in New Zealand, the question that came up was, if chiropractic is so big, why is it still so small? How is it after so many decades, after so many brilliant people, we've got college presidents from schools around the world here in this one room, the Rubicon is a group of college presidents who represent the vitalistic perspective and are committed to getting our message out to the world. And for that, I say thank you, Dr. Klum, and the rest of the Rubicon for having me. Because I ask you, how can we be so smart? How can we be so right? How can we be on trend so well? And we're still the pretty much world's best kept secret in healthcare? Would anybody agree? Yep. So I ask you, how can that be? What do you think it is? Anybody have any good suggestions? We've got really smart people here. I, well, let's, let me not just talk at you all night. It's time to have a conversation. Who thinks they have a good understanding of how it is we can be so right, we can have all the science we've talked about all day today, and yet the world still doesn't know? How can that be? Does anybody else ever ask themselves that question? Is it because the schools aren't doing their job? Is it because the associations aren't doing their job? Is it because I'm sure all of you have a villain in the profession that you want to complain about? We have a lousy job communicating our value. We have a lousy job communicating our value. And I guess the question really is, whose responsibility is it to communicate our value. Now, that's the right answer, but I can tell you I've been traveling the world literally for decades now, and although we say the right things, if I can be completely blunt with my friends here, we don't necessarily practice what we're preaching. We have a tendency to expect somebody else or a group or an organization to do it for us. I'm just a chiropractor. I'm just an administrator. I'm just a president. I'm just the head of an organization. I am not a marketer. Sound familiar? That's the marketing department. So I hope in the few minutes that we have together tonight to not just present information to you, but to stir something inside of you that gets you to understand that brain you've learned so much about here today, I hope to shift it. I hope to say something that stirs your soul inside of you, that you walk out of here tonight asking yourself different questions. Not why aren't they doing it, but perhaps why aren't I? And the bad news is, in the next 30 to 40 minutes or so, you're no longer going to have any excuse as to why you can't. Sound right? So if you're like me, 
you are deeply passionate about getting our message out to the masses. Let's get into how we can do exactly that. All right. Uh, just a little survey here. How many of you have ever heard me speak before? Excuse me. How many of you have never heard me speak before? That's what I'm... Oh, nice. Okay. Fresh audience. I love it. All right. So uh, a little bit about uh, who I am and where you might know me from and so on. Um, my name is Dr. Jason Deitch. Uh, I had a really fascinating experience. Uh, I was in practice for almost 10 years. I went to Life University, graduated. I was very involved with the student ICA. I wrote for the school newspaper. Uh, this is something that has, from the time I was literally eight years old, been an idea that I have felt needed to be brought to the world. I can't explain to you why that is. Many of you feel the same type of passion. It's just in us. Uh, and so I've been spending all this time developing different projects and programs. Uh, has any of you heard of a project called Amplified? Yep, exactly. Uh, we're the largest social media platform for chiropractors. And I create all kinds of educational programs that are done for you or done with you. My purpose, my mission, my passion in life is to give you, give us the tools we need to know what to do and then know how to do what needs to be done. And that's get our message out there. Now, there's definitely challenges along the way. I'm not going to say this is an easy thing to do. I'm not going to say, oh, no biggie, just click a button and we're all set, we'll be fine. But I will show you, if you'll shift the way you think about it, how easy it can be and how you can find your way to contribute to what ultimately has to be a group effort. So you may know me from some of these projects and programs I've done in the past. I also have, I call it the privilege of working with organizations like the International Chiropractors Association, like working with Cairo Congress, which for those who are not in the United States, is the association of all of the state associations within the United States. Uh, I, of course, work with today's chiropractic leadership. I have the privilege of working with Dr. Klum, Dr. Rob Scott, Dr. Reekman on really bringing our message of leadership to the profession. In addition, I work with many of the state associations and many of what I'll call the rock star chiropractors in our profession, like Dr. Brad Glowacki, Dr. Bo Pierce, and many, many others. We've got approximately 1,000 clients, 1,000 chiropractors, almost 1,000 offices that we serve, and about 10,000 chiropractors per day are receiving our daily inspirational messages. So this is not something I woke up just the other day and said, I got an idea, let's try to take advantage of Facebook. Um, it's one of those things that has just been an amazing journey. And for those of you that don't quite know yet, um, the way this all unfolded, you know, who am I to stand up here? I'm a chiropractor. Um, but what happened to me in this passion of trying to figure out how do we get our message to the masses, um, how many of you have ever heard what I call the whisper in your life? That voice inside that just keeps pushing you to do something that is completely unreasonable and absolutely insane. Am I the only one who's ever heard the whisper? So what happened to me, for those of you that don't know me, because many of you don't, was that I was in practice, private practice in Oakland, California for almost 10 years. And as I was having a wonderful experience in practice, certainly serving people, having fun, if you can afford to buy a home in Northern California, you're doing all right. And life was fine, life was great, but I was miserable. And the reason I was miserable was because I was in my office helping people, I was making a nice living, but my life's purpose was really all about bringing this message out to the world. I got this crazy notion that back in the early 2000s, the only way to get your message out into the world was to be on TV. And the only way to be on TV was either to be a politician, to be a celebrity, to be a criminal, or to be a best-selling author. And so I figured that was about the only approach at that point I was going to go with. I got this crazy notion to write a book. My wife at the time said, I'll tell you what, you go do what you would got to do, you follow your dream, I'll go back to work. And long story short, again, whatever you call the universe, God, intelligence, whatever it is, long story short, my wife at the time ended up reaching out to a fr family friend who happened to be a technology recruiter. And it just so happened that she said, wow, that's really great, your timing is amazing, I just got a new client that I'm going to set you up for an interview with. Wonderful, great, everything's working out. 
Well, fast forward, she ended up having an interview with an 18-year-old kid named Mark, who had dropped out of Harvard and had this crazy idea. He had the whisper, too. Within three weeks of us deciding that we were going to leave practice and move into who knew what the unknown would hold for us, she became the first director of marketing at Facebook. And so I got a very early insight as she would work directly with Mark as the head of marketing for this thing called Facebook, which has become what we all know it to be today. And that's what I want to share with you here today, is really an insider's perspective as a chiropractor, how to use this technology to do what I call share the best kept secret in healthcare on the world's number one social network. So let's get into how to do it. I did some uh, auditing, and of course, our friends here in France are doing a really nice job. Uh, the French Association, I'm going to show with you some of the do's and don'ts. My presentation title, of course, is the do's and don'ts of social media, and how to really uh, have a successful practice in 2020. Show of hands, how many people are in practice? Practice, awesome, okay, you'll be able to use this. How many people are not in practice? Just so I can get a visual of what that is. Most of you are in practice, awesome. The French Association is doing a really nice job and this happens to be one of the do's. You'll see here, let's see if that works, we have a, uh, you'll see this part over here, they've updated this, they've updated this, they are doing a really nice job. And what they're doing is they're posting very visual and very informative information. All great stuff. And what you'll notice here is the number of shares that these organizations, this, these posts, are receiving. Great stuff. Do, 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 do. And you'll notice as we share things like, whether it's back pain or pregnancy or exercises, there's lots of people who are sharing it, lots of practices who are sharing it. So I want to point out how this relationship is designed to work. Organizations and associations should be providing really great, great high quality content. But it only goes so far on its own. You and your practices should be paying attention and finding that great content and building what I call a tribe. Building your local audience of people who actually want what it is that you offer. Does that make sense? So that's how we all work together in this pro project and program. Organizations and associations get the information, put it together. We, in our practices, should be sharing it. And the more of us that are sharing with the more of them, the more people that will be aware of what it is that we're calling chiropractic and our version of it. And those are some of the detailed problems along the way. So here's a really nice job. You'll notice again a do, updated image, updated image. But of course, many chiropractors don't know what to do or think they can just delegate it to somebody. And if you saw the difference between this page and this page, what might you notice about that? And forgive me if this person is in the room. I apologize, I found it online. But look, look at the difference. Do you look over here and go, this is a doctor I have to go see? I can't wait. I mean, this must be a very progressive, very innovative. I'll bet they know a lot about the brain and neurology. Not so much. So this is where we fall down. And again, we think we can just delegate it to the marketing department because we're technicians, we're chiropractors, we're smart. That's not our department. It is your department. So the three don'ts to get practical on what we shouldn't be doing. Number one, we have to make sure that our pages look impressive. If people come and have their first impression at your practice's Facebook page, and to be clear, I'm referring to your practice's Facebook page, I don't care what you do personally, this is all on a professional level, you've got to make sure that it doesn't look neglected. People aren't going to think it's important if you don't make it look important. Does that make sense? Yes? Give me some feedback. Yes, that makes sense. Awesome. Number two, many of you don't know what to say. You don't know what to post. You wake up one day, you see something, you post something here and there. It's random. You don't have any agenda. You don't have a strategy to it. You go, oops, I haven't posted in a while. You post eight things and then you come back next month. Does that sound like something people are going to go, I can't wait to get more of that? Likely not. 
So that's don't number two. And then don't number three, and I know here, what I've heard here in France is there is no advertising allowed in chiropr for chiropractic, but around the world there in many cases is. And what I found to be one of the worst things we're doing is we are in many cases winning what's referred to as the race to the bottom. So we have learned that marketing is supposedly the same thing as advertising. And the way to advertise is to have these deep discounts so that you can get lots of people to come on in by making it cheap. Now here's the issue. When it comes to healthcare services, and we've all kind of gotten screwed up with this whole concept, when it comes to buying professional health care services, how many of you, and I'm going to call you normal people, although not all of you are, I'm going to call you normal people. Do you, when you look for a doctor, are you looking for the closest, cheapest doctor you can find? Or are you looking for the best you can find and afford? And where do most normal people go when they're looking for professional services? online or they ask friends. People ask friends for referrals to professional services. I'm not talking about where to find the cheapest flight, the cheapest tires, you know, where, and a local restaurant. We're talking professional services. And as professionals, we have to up our game. So here are the three do's. These are three things you want to do, and it's what I'm going to be talking about here for the rest of my time. Number one, you want to think about marketing like a chiropractor. That means it's holistic. It's connected. There is a purpose to it. Number two, I'll go into more detail. Number two, you want to attract people who want what you really have. Those of you who have done what I'll call the Groupon style of marketing, oh wow, lots of new patients who come in for the deal and look for the next one. That is a mentality, it's a consciousness, we'll talk about that. And then number three, I'll leave you with ways to have additional resources, all free for you and your staff to learn exactly step by step what I'm about to go over here today. So right now, first we're gonna talk about the up mindset because most of you are thinking about this whole thing, forgive me, wrong. Today, we're gonna to make that adjustment. I want you to attract people in your practice who want what you really offer. And what's interesting is we all offer something slightly different. Yes or yes? Yeah, we're going to talk about that. So here are the two mindsets I want to lay out for you here today. Number one, I call it farming versus hunting. Okay? A hunter, for example, asks the question. A hunter says, I'm hungry. I got to go get some food. I'm going to go kill something, and I'm going to eat. Sounds logical. However, if you're a hunter, what's the downside? As soon as you've eaten... And as soon as you've taken your nap and you wake up, what do you have to do again? You got to go hunting again. You're starting over. In fact, I'll say you're worse than starting over. The animals actually learn about your hunting techniques and they modify and adapt. It gives you quick, immediate relief, but is not what? A sustainable supply or system. When it comes to marketing for new patients, I want you to have sustainable systems. And many of you are thinking like hunters, because the number one question you ask yourself is, OK, if I do this, what's going to be my ROI? And if I ain't going to get an ROI, I ain't going to do it. But I ask you, if that's, your men if that's your mentality, that's your attitude, that's your consciousness, what message do you have to put out to your community in order to get immediate results? In order to get somebody in right now so you can justify your ROI, do you tell the truth? Do you share the story? Is that what drives patients in now? Or do you have to modify your message in a way that may not quite be exactly what we would talk about if we were telling the truth, but we're saying what we got to say to get them in? And my question for you is, what's the cost of that? And the answer is, it's the reason we're in the situation we're in right now. Just about most people in America right now, most chiropractors in America right now, I'm sure this happens around the world, from this consciousness and mentality has created an environment where people think chiropractic is about what? Why? 
Because that's about all we're telling them. Is it because they're stupid? Or is it because that's what we're telling them? <laughs> yes or yes, are you with me? How could they possibly know something different? You ever ask yourself that? How could they be so crazy to take all these drugs for immediate relief? Kind of ironically, we kind of do the same thing. Well, why wouldn't we tell them the story? Well, that's not going to get somebody in my office today. And if I'm not going to get an ROI on what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do it. That's the way people think about taking drugs. If I'm not going to feel good immediately, why would I do it? Are you with me? It's a mindset first, and there are consequences to our actions. And if you don't like the way people think about chiropractic, then you can consider those the consequences of our actions. And the good news is we can do something about it. Farming, on the other hand, is all about a sustainable supply. We ask different questions. We go, what seeds can I plant today that in time will allow people to understand what we really do? If you understand the principles of farming, you know you don't plant a seed and go, food yet? How about now? How about now? Okay, I'll give it a week. And then if I don't see any food after planting my seed, this doesn't work. Ridiculous. But that's how we're playing this, folks. That's how we're playing this. Not so good. So what I want to also then say is, well, what do you do about it? And the answer is you shift your thinking from being a marketer to being a mentor. You want to think of yourself as a teacher, a leader, someone who actually knows something that's really, really valuable and is committed to sharing it with as many people as you can. Yes or yes? Yeah. And again, these are different questions. Now, here's one of the issues. And this is one of those really sensitive things to talk about, especially in this room. And I think of it, of course, as the elephant in the room. So watch, I'm gonna do an experiment with all of you. Hi everyone, I'm a chiropractor. I love chiropractic. In fact, chiropractic has changed my life. I, uh, I have a practice and I provide chiropractic care in my practice and we provide great chiropractic services. Just like all of you. Now, does anybody know what I do? Well, we love to talk about that, right? We can't, can't have a sentence without the word chiropractic in it. How many of you know what I do? I'm in a room full of really, maybe even the smartest chiropractors on the planet. How many of you know what I do because, because I say I'm a chiropractor? <laughs> do you realize how ridiculous what we are doing out there is? We've got to educate them about chiropractic. Of course we do. But I'm a chiropractor standing in front of chiropractors telling you I'm a chiropractor and you have no idea what I do. Hello? You with me? Problem? Isn't the worst question any of us get that is so brilliant what you just said, but I don't live near you. I live on the other side of the country. Where can I find what you're talking about? I got a buddy who went to school with me and graduated. I'm not sure what he does in his practice either, but he's a good guy. She's terrific. Problem? Okay, well, let's just not have any mysteries as to why we continue to be the best kept secret in healthcare, okay? Let's just not be wondering why this is going on. There's very good reasons why our results are what they are. But we can do something about it, and I hope we do. So, uh, and I'll just leave you by saying, just as a thought, well, what do we do about it? Imagine what attorneys do. Maybe let's use them as a model. Hi, I'm an attorney. Well, what do you do? I provide legal services. Okay, well, where do you do it? You know, in my law office. Well, what do you do? Well, I write contracts and I stand in front of people and I make sure that justice is served. That is about the equivalent of what we sound like. 
And of course, if an attorney said that, you'd go, yeah, I have no idea what you do. But what they do is something different, in fact. They go, well, I'm a divorce attorney. I'm a tax attorney. I'm a forensic attorney. I'm a criminal prosecutor. I'm a, they've got a word for every detailed. I am a forensic tax attorney for corporations on the East Coast that work in tech with uh, income over $1 billion. Got it. I know what you do. And I keep wondering why we don't have the same ability to articulate who we are and what we do and our unique specialty. And more importantly, the people we most want to serve. Because we can sit in audiences like this and be brilliant, and we are. And that feels really wonderful. But people out there have no clue what you're talking about. And that's a problem because they continue to suffer, and so do we. So what I want to teach you is that marketing is fine. That whole advertising thing, no problem, but understand the consequences. You are marketing to the mainstream. Less than 1% of the population right now, by the math, is going to a search engine and going, I need a chiropractor, which typically you know means I'm looking for some sort of neck and back pain relief quickly, covered by my insurance, because the drugs don't work. That's usually what that means, which I would tell you, in my opinion, is not your target audience. Doesn't mean we can't help them, but that's not getting the story to the masses. Then there's this other thing called the upstream market. It's the 99%. It's the everyone else who's not actually searching for relief in this moment. It's all the people that go, well, that's interesting. I never thought of it that way. Wow, that's cool. I didn't know you do that. But we don't have any message going to them that makes any sense to them. We're speaking broadly, and nobody knows where to buy what we're selling. Unless all we want to do is think about ourselves and our own self-interest and our own practices. Well, people know what I'm selling in my practice, so it works for me. Forgive me if I'm putting pressure on any nerves here. OK, so that's the mindset that's gotten us into this mess. This is the protocol that will hopefully get us out of this mess. And I break it down into three steps. And I'll go through them really quickly to be sensitive on time. Number one, you've got to put your best face forward on Facebook. You've got to put a little bit of energy and attention so when they find you on Facebook, they actually find something that's impressive. They find something that says, wow, that's cool, that's interesting. That's the kind of doctor I would like to see. So that's number one. So how do you do that? Well, here's some examples. By the way, I'm going to give you access to all of the things I'm sharing with you here. So I'll give you a website at the end. You can download all of this stuff. Now, here's the, here is the thing, right? You know, like if you could only adjust one place, one time, one thing, you'd go to that one place, that one message. Here's the thing you all want to make sure you're paying close attention to. And it is this idea of clicking like, follow, and see first. If you know anything about Facebook, one of the criticisms is that when you get all these people to like your Facebook page, only a small percentage of people see it. How many of you have heard that before? Yeah. Well, that's true if you don't put forth a touch of effort. If you put forth a touch of effort, you can inspire people to actually click one extra button. When they click follow and see first, 100% of those people who take that action, please hear what I'm saying. This is the most important thing from a communication standpoint you can learn. When you can get people to click that like, follow, and see first sequence, 100% of those people will receive 100% of your posts, 100% of the time, with zero dollars spent on advertising. That's my kind of advertising. Free advertising to everyone who says, I want more. Not paid advertising to people that are not looking for what you're talking about. It makes no sense what we're doing. Who should I see? Where should I go? What should I take? Yes, if you're in practice, you get questions every day, all day. Show people, teach people that they can engage and show them how to click like, leave comments. Share your posts with others inspire others to live their best life. 
Let's throw a little B.J. Palmer in there and inspire the world to want to be a part of what we're talking about. Like, follow, see first. <coughs> and think of your Facebook page as your community, your amplifier, your place to share your truth with your people. That's the mindset you want to have. And again, if you go to unmarketclass.com, everything I'm showing you, you can download for free, have your staff do it, you do it as well. That's step one. When you invite people to see what you have to offer, you need to welcome them with something that is impressive and actually shows them what you want them to do. That's available for you as well. Step two is you've got to create a content posting strategy. Well, why should I go to your Facebook page? Who cares? What are you going to sell me more of your chiropractic, I don't know what you're talking about stuff? No, give them some English or French or something that is in consumer speak. So what are those things? I call them gifts, as in presents. Why? Because it's easy to give away presents, and people like to receive presents. And if you stop thinking of it as marketing, well, what am I going to say? It better work. If I don't get an ROI, I better change it. OK. Neck pain, come on in, can help you. That'll work. If your goal is to teach people that chiropractic is about neck and back pain, if that's your goal, it works. If you had a different goal, it doesn't work. So, gifts, gift of inspiration. How many of you are not interested in being any more inspired? Anyone? Okay, thought so. So, gift of inspiration, the gift of you, and the gift of endorsement. I'll get into detail about that. Now, here's the thing we have to understand. We are smart people, so this is not very complex. How many of you have ever heard the idea that people buy with emotion and justify it with logic, right? Sales one-on-one, -on -one, we've heard that in practically kindergarten. If that's true, if it's true, then let's talk about connecting with people first, all right, and then educating them second, right? Heidi mentioned it this morning. She goes, oh, we've been trying to get published, trying to get published, trying to get published. Then we got this new guy on town, and he knew everybody, and as soon as he comes on our team, publish, 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 publish. Why? Because she wasn't smart enough? No, of course not. Because people do business with people they like. We have to be people first. So let's connect with people as opposed to, can I sell you my chiropractic? Can I sell you my chiropractic? Let me sell you my chiropractic. Let's be human beings, for goodness sakes. Be likable. Let people connect with you. Be interested instead of just trying to be interesting. You've heard all of this before. So, I want thousands of people in your community to wake up. How many of you use your phones to wake up every morning? Yeah. How many with you in the first few minutes of waking up are already checking into Facebook? Yeah. So your posts should be in their face every single morning, not with a coupon, but with something that inspires them to live their best life every day. And if you will give first, as our lasting principle says, because of our abundant philosophy, people will pay attention. They will be inspired. Everyone? No. The ones who want what you have will be. So inspire people first. You've got to make that your first step. It's a sequence. Step two is the gift of you. This is where we stop going chiropractic, chiropractic, chiropractic. But we can explain our version, your unique perspective, your unique solutions, what your favorite things are. They are not buying chiropractic. Watch, here's how crazy we are. How many of you drive across town to buy gas? OK. So why do I ask you that question? Because gas is a commodity. Which means you can just pull over to the closest gas station, assuming it's relatively priced about the same. You pull over, you get it, and you leave. We speak about chiropractic like it's a commodity. And yet we're all unique and different. Some of you are genius brain neurologists. Others of you are more sports functional performance oriented. Let's let people know what we really do. And I challenge you to, in fact, not use the word chiropractic. 
because they don't understand what you're talking about. I challenge you to explain what you do with words other than chiropractor, chiropractic. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be proud to be one. I'm saying that you should be an effective communicator to get people to listen more to what you're really talking about. You go, hi, I'm a chiropractor. They go, oh, I know what you do. And if we're happy with our results collectively, I guess, have at it. But I'm not. So what do you do with the gift share of the gift of you? You do internal events in your office, you do events out in your community, and you do digital events. And that's one of the most exciting things is you can now, from the convenience of any internet connection, anywhere in the world, teach as many people as you want to whatever topic you want to. The phone that you are all probably multitasking, listening to me on right now, can teach people anything anywhere for free. Folks, we have no excuse for people to not understand what it is that we really do. We have no excuse. All right. So step two uh, is create your content posting strategy. The third part of that, right? The first one is the gift of inspiration. The second one is the gift of you. The third one is what I call the gift of endorsement. This is one of the most brilliant ideas none of you are doing. How many of you would like to start getting referrals on a regular basis from other professionals, from other places in your community for free regularly? You want to know how to do it? For free, regularly, from other referrals. How many of you would rather get somebody off of Google versus a referral from a local health professional? So how do you do it? You endorse others. If I do a video that endorses a personal trainer or another doctor or a doula, if I do a video that says, this is my favorite trainer, this is the doula of choice, pick your specialty. Think of the people, places, and products you recommend on a regular basis and causes you support and do videos that endorse them. What does somebody do with a video that endorses them? And what happens when they share the video of you endorsing them with their audience? What happens? New people. Hey, everybody. Did you see what the best chiropractor in town said about me? Now, Life University, for specifically, my alma mater, is built on the concept of giving, loving, and serving out of our abundance. And as far as I'm concerned, that should be the motto of the entire profession. So maybe we stop going, where's my new patient? Where, how much is this gonna cost me? Am I gonna get anything out of it? Why don't we start using this power tool that all of us are addicted to and start sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing and don't stop. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. So I will show you exactly how to do it, what to ask, and all of that stuff. If you go to the website, check it out. I'm going to give you a whole scripting on how to do videos and all that good stuff. So here's the way you want to think about it. I'm going to be quick and wrap this up. What do I do with my content posting strategy? Here's the way you want to think about it. Like a cable news station, excuse me, a cable station, a cable company, they have nationally, nationally syndicated content, like the Super Bowl or NBA or things that is, aren't local, they're national or even international. So you want to use nationally syndicated, high quality, high production content created by really good designers that have really great content that can do that for you. Okay, find it wherever you can, but that's the way you want to think of your high quality content. And then you want to create your own local content. So you may watch the NBA, but wherever you are, you're going to see the local news, the local sports, the local weather. That's the way we do it. Let us do the high quality stuff for everyone because you, you can't afford to do that on your own. But we can't provide the local news, sports, and weather of what's going on in your practice, the testimonials, the upcoming workshops, the new cool things about what you do in your practice. That's the way to think about it. We're a team. 
We create the national stuff, you create the local stuff. Yes, does that make sense? Okay, and then we just share, 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 share. And then you focus on getting other Kairos to share, share, share. So we connect, engage, and promote. Connect, engage, and promote. So you connect by optimizing your Facebook page. You promote, you, excuse me, you, yeah, you uh, engage, excuse me, by sharing the gifts. And then you promote. Well, how do you do that? You start promoting that you've got this tribe, you've got this community, you've got this amazing place where we share this amazing information and local relevant information. And all you've got to do is, see this, see this? Like, follow, see first. And then everybody gets all of your messages for free. And that's how we get this profession where it needs to go. Posters, handouts, video screens, we got all of that for you. If you want better results, train with your team. <laughs> Listen, there are people that go, well, oh, I don't have time, I don't have energy. Yeah, do you not check your voicemail? Do you not check the mail? It's not an option, it's what you do. That's where people are. So don't tell me you don't have time for this. You want really great results, then you create incentives. You create reasons, you create financial benefits when your team gets the job done. How many people do you want to see? What's your vision? How much impact do you want to make? Empower your team to have a plan and give them a reward for executing on that plan. And you will find that you will attract believers, you will attract people that like you, connect you with you. Referrals, people that connect with you online, are different than people that found your ad and figure that your $10 program was better than the $12 one down the street. Are you with me? So you have two options, basically. You can go, thank you, I'm hungry, time for dinner. Or you can take some action. Everything I'm sharing with you that I just showed you is 100% free. You'll learn all about the Daily Dose of Inspiration, Health Reminders, Unmarket Class. You'll get my new book called Unmarket Your Practice. It's free. You download it, no problem. If you want to wake up inspired with me, then go to my Facebook page, which is at Dr. Jason Deitch on Facebook. Remember to click like, follow, and see first. What I want to simply close with is this. We have the best kept secret in healthcare. People are literally dying. People have bought into the idea that the next best drug is going to save us all. And people are rushing and clamoring for it. And I would propose to you it's not because people think drugs are great, because if you ask anyone, they'll say, I don't take them, I don't believe in them. And yet, they can't take enough of them fast enough. And there's a very simple reason why that is. There are some very smart people who communicate their message beautifully. You get a beautiful picture, you're connected with an emotional feeling that if you just take Abilify, Prozac, and fill in the blank here, you will experience this beautiful inspirational life too. You can't even pronounce the crap you're taking. But they rush for it and run for it because they are better communicators than we are. They're not smarter in science. They don't have the truth on their side. They're not using anatomy and physiology and the laws of the universe to get things done like we do. If we want to save this profession, let alone your practice, if we want to save people's lives, you'll start using the tools that it takes to do it. Thank you, Rubicon Group, for having me.